Bayesian demography 250 years after Bayes. Hi, I'm Jakub Biak from the University of Southampton. And I'm John Bryant from Statistics New Zealand. So what is Bayesian demography? What are Bayesian methods? Bayesian methods have over 250 years of history. It all started in 1763 with the publication of the famous Bayes theorem, uh, two years after the death of the Reverend Thomas Bayes, who, who invented it. And since then, Bayesian statistics evolved over the two and a half centuries, and so did Bayesian demography, which actually started not, not uh, long after the, the Bayes theory was published. What is unique about the Bayesian approach is that it describes everything uh, in terms of probabilities as measures of belief. Bayes' famous theorem allows you to take these beliefs, um, add a model of how the world works, add some data, and to update your beliefs in a, in a rational and, and efficient way. Um, and it does it in a way that makes uncertainty front and centre. Mm -hmm. So you you have a way of measuring your uncertainty before you look at the data, and then you, you have a way of measuring your uncertainty after you've looked at the data. And this is important for all sorts of problems in demography and elsewhere, but it's particularly important for the sort of bread and butter of applied demography, which is forecasting. Absolutely. So a, a, forecasting, a forecast is, is no use whatsoever unless it tells you how uncertain it is. And demographers are quite famous for forecasting anyway. They are. So, uh, De Bayesian demography is currently on a roll. There's a bit of a boom going on. Um, and partly this is just simply a fact of Bayesian demography depends on computer power and computer power is becoming cheaper and cheaper. Um, but it also reflects some pretty big recent achievements in, in, of Bayesian demography. And the most famous of those is a bunch of demographers and statisticians have got together and developed methods which have been adopted by the UN to do probably pro proper statistically valid um, uh, forecasts for every single country in the world for about 100 years. So and for the first time ever, Bayesian methods get into official statistics. Exactly. They're, they're the UN's official population forecasts. Bayesian methods in general are very well suited for the problems that are difficult to solve by using other methods. So whenever we're dealing with difficult, tricky, non-traditional data sources, uh, whenever we, we have to meet the demand for de disaggregation to ve very small areas or units. Which is what we were doing at Statistics New Zealand. We found that using these Bayesian methods we could get, we could get estimates for small areas of the country that people didn't think it was possible to do. Because basically the traditional methods are not really well tailored for such a, such a complex and complicated problems. And this is true not only for demography, but for other disciplines as well. And this is true wherever uncertainty matters, which is pretty much everywhere. So what, what next? As John said, Bayesian methods are becoming mainstream. There are more and more Bayesian papers uh, in demography, more, more and more presentations at, at conferences. What is lacking behind a bit is uh, training. So we, are, we do not have uh, good training in Bayesian methods, at, especially at an undergraduate level. Yeah, for some reason, universities are shy about offering undergraduates Bayesian training. Yes, and all, all you get is, is postgraduate elective courses or self-study, uh, self which, which, which leaves a huge gap. The other challenge, which is a, a very big one, is uh, how to communicate the uncertainty, how to communicate the fact that we are living in an uncertain world and uh, how to convey this message across uh, to, the, to the user so that they can make the most of it. But partic particularly to ordinary people who are not, who not trained statisticians. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's some challenges, but there's also reasons to think that the current boom in Bayesian demography is going to continue. Because some of the, some of the problems that um, demographers are tackling at the moment are almost sort of tailor-made mm -hmm. for, for Bayesian methods. Um, demographers more and more are trying to deal with really complicated models that have got, they're dealing with all sorts of different flows and changes and things like that, um, and trying to combine together lots and lots of different diverse data sets all, all look a bit different from each other. Mm. Uh, um, and Bayesian methods are really good at that sort of thing. Um, big data, everybody wants to use big data, but big data always has, like, there's problems with it, there's things that's missing, there's groups that's missing, it's got biases and so on. Mm. But Bayesian methods give you really nice, elegant, clear, transparent ways of dealing with that. Um, decisions. 
So demographers aren't much use to anybody unless they're helping them make good decisions. And Bayesian methods um, have really nice ways of, of thinking about decision making, particularly decision making when there's uncertainty. Um, and my guess is that over the next few years, we're going to get more and more statisticians from outside demography are going to, they're going to want to move and, and look at demographic problems because there's, there's, a whole, there's some very interesting problems. There's problems that have enormous policy relevance and there's a rich tradition of techniques and methods and so on, sort of homegrown within demography that are just mm -hmm. asking to be turned into Bayesian models. Mm -hmm. And this is something which we as statistical demographers would very much welcome. If you'd like to find out more, please see our recent review paper in population studies uh, given at the address below.